Microsoft's purpose is in service of your purpose. And again, 2024 is the year that partners come out as the leading edge of the spear on finding this buyer intent. You show up to every meeting and demonstrate why you are relevant. Every day I have to force myself to make sure that I'm taking one step ahead in terms of my own learning. That flywheel of success is where you will build momentum and that momentum will continue and then you feed into the other systems to say, this is what we did, this is how we did it together. Welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Partnering. I'm Vince Menzion, your host, and my mission is to help leaders like you achieve your greatest results through successful partnering. Today we have a special treat for you. You see, in November of 2023, over 300 Microsoft partners, Microsoft leaders, ambassadors, and other experts congregated in Dallas, Texas for two days of very rich content. We recorded all that content, and now I have the privilege of sharing some of that with you. One of those sessions, led by Elliot Dunlap, a Microsoft leader, focused in on helping partners to align to Microsoft's sales strategy, what they call MSEM. Elliot was one of the highly rated speakers from that event, and his session is really entertaining and provides a lot of value to partners that they don't necessarily know about. And I hope you enjoy this session as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And I wanna thank you for following, listening, and supporting the Ultimate Guide to Partnering. And now, here's Elliot Dunlap. How many people in the room know what MSEM is? You've heard it a couple of times today. Well, now you're gonna get the deep dive. And this session is sponsored by our amazing partner, our marquee partner, Sage. This gentleman is, he might put you to sleep. I don't know. It's gonna, it's, we're, you know, we're debating how long it's gonna be. Five minutes on the snooze clock? What do you think? <laughs> now, I got to meet Elliot this year, but he is a legend at Microsoft. He's an amazing sales leader. And I am so pleased to welcome him to take you through what you need to do to work with the Microsoft sales team in 24. Thank you, Elliot. I appreciate it. I'm gonna set my water up here and just make sure, but it seems like, uh, you know, first of all, it's good to be here and see everybody. I hadn't seen everybody in about five years, but we're gonna get a little lively. I like to start off with a little fun, so let's go. Anybody know this song? Anybody know this song? Can you sing with me? Let's clap, come on. Let's make lots of money. Let's make lots of money. All right. Everybody woke, we want to make this money, right? <laughs> I'm like a child of the 80s. I love this song. Okay, this is my part. Everybody, let's sing, right? This is the hook. Let's go. Oh, there's a lot of opportunity. If you know you can take them, you know there's a lot of opportunities. If you know you can make them, make or break them. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well. Now y'all know when my mother told me to only sing outside and after, and no singing after 8 p.m. <laughs> so they asked me to put a bio up here real quick, and I'm not one for a lot of words, but I call this my flag, right? So this tells a lot about me. Each square, it's a living document. But what's important, what I want you to take from this bio is uh, Bonnie St. John, and if anybody knows about her, she won an Olympic gold medal. And I love her quote saying, you know, I learned that people fall down, winners get up, and gold medal winners just get up faster. And what I want to do today is, as I take you through the MSM process, is really help you get up faster. How do we speed up the velocity of the conversation and the sales deal? And I know that you've heard Vince and leaders come up here talking about MSM, MSM, and it is the language that we need to be thinking about. So, we're going to play a little game today. I'm going to call it the co-sell game. Every time I say partner, y'all yell out co-sell. I'm going to try to change the narrative. And I know this is the ultimate partner uh, experience, but 
<laughs> exactly. Y'all got me, right? But I think partner is a description. <laughs> I think co I, but I'm going to say this. I think partner is a description, but co sale is the prescription. It is an action. It is what's going to take us to the next level. Many of you partners out there are saying, how do I? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So we're going to go through the importance of a sales methodology. We're going to talk about the MSIM process, you know, Microsoft customer engagement model. We're going to talk about a partner executive summary. <laughs> I love it. We're going to talk about a win formula. And we're going to talk about the prescription for the next steps. So let's dive into it. I mentioned before that I'm a child of the 80s, and I used to love to watch The Electric Company. Act. Anybody remember this game? In. Chin. Ick. Chick. Ch. Arm. Charm. Ease. Cheese. Let's go together. Let's see if we can do it together. Act. Chat. In chin, ick, chick, arm, charm, ease, cheese. What I loved about that was they were in sync. And I think that when you go to partner conversations and you think about MSIM, Co-sell, that's right. When you go to co-sell conversations and you think about MSIM, you want to be in sync. You want to speak that language. And what I loved about it is like one part of the word came out, the other part of the word, and they said it together. Right. And many of you, I don't know if you know, but that's Morgan Freeman on the electric company right there, which was kind of fun. So as I, you know, I've been in this Microsoft channel for 13 years and it's amazing to me that when I go out there and I talk to our co-sale organization, that many of our partners don't have a sales methodology or they don't have a way of moving deals through. I would talk to partners, they'd be like, well, it's zero and then we're done or it's hot and it's good. One of the things about a sales methodology I think is important is it really, really provides the framework and outline seller's approach to the process. I mean, how many of us have set in forecast calls? Oh, they're only good when you're only at 100%, right? <laughs> Even in it's what else can we do more? And I think the importance of having this framework is really about what questions to ask and who is the owner of the next step. So the sales methodology is important. When you think about you know, connecting the process to the customer needs. These are questions that leaders, I think that part of the sales methodology helps leaders ask the right questions so that we can get the right answers and get everybody around it. So as partners, as you think, as I'm going to take you through this journey, think about what is your sales methodology? If you don't have one, we like you to adopt the MSIM or get as close to it as you can, right? So speaking the MSIM process, the co sale language, have y'all ever, you know, have you ever gone into a meeting? Like I've gotten calls from, from partners that say, hey, I got a great deal. I'd like to meet with the account team or the stew team. And I'd like to set up a meeting. Give me some time, Elliot. And I get excited and I go get the account team or the seller or the Microsoft resource team together. And they get in the room with the partner or they get on a call. And after the call, I have like, you know, I, I talk to the partner. I say, hey, you know, what happened? And the partner says, well, they told me they'll get back with me. And then I go to the Microsoft seller and I say, well, this was such a hot lead. What happened? And the Microsoft seller says, well, I didn't understand the differentiation. I didn't know where the deal was. And so the beauty of MSIM, what Microsoft did a couple of years ago, and we're still evolving this, is that they put the whole organization in one language. Back in the day, it used to be the STU had a language, the CSU had a language, the ATU had a language, and we would all try to get in a room. We didn't even have a language amongst ourselves that was comparable. And right now we do. It's a great time for partners to really think about the MSIM, think about, think about the co-selling and think about the MSIM process and how we're going to move through. That's not me, everybody. 
<laughs> but how we're going to move through this process. As we look at this, I would love for you all to just think about your own communities, your own resources, think about the language, and let's figure out where we have some synergies at. So I love this. As I thought about the MSM process, I said to myself, what is the first stage of this? Like, how do you get this conversation started? And many of y'all have heard of Judson. You've heard him speak at Inspire. You've heard him speak at Microsoft Ready. You've heard the topic of rooms in the house, but never has it been so important because the AEs and the Stu and everybody around in Microsoft talks about the rooms of the house. Why is this important from our co-sale community? Because we want to quickly identify where are you operating at? Where is the lead coming from? A lot of people throw out names. Sally Phil, Alex, Spalding, uh, I'm talking to such and such, the CFO. We, the better conversation that starts in the beginning of the MSM process is, I'm in the room of the house of modern work, or I'm in the room of the house in security, or I'm talking to the chief revenue officer room of the house. That perks up ears, because it's really not a name, it's really where you're located at. And that might be, that gives that Microsoft resource an opportunity to say, man, we're, we're not in the CMO room of the house. You're in the CMO room of the house. Or we're, we are, and I didn't know you were there. So this language is important. I think this is the beginning when you think about the MCM process before we get to the sales stages of understanding exactly where you stand. So what are the stages? They're very simple. There's five stages, right? Listen and consult, inspire and design, empower and achieve, realize value, manage and optimize. When you think about there's only five stages to deal velocity, and you think about Microsoft as a massive organization, right? You think about what Kevin mentioned yesterday, what Alex just said today about the opportunities that the millions and trillions of dollars of opportunities and accounts that we're not even touching and we think about how do we get on common ground and what's going to be the selling process to help us move deal velocity through. The first one, listen and consult. Now, I told you I've been at Microsoft for 13 years. I think personally that this is the most important stage of the MSM process because in listen and consult is the top funnel. It is exactly where you think about your solutions and you think about where you want to go to market. You think about what industry you want to get in. The listening consult stage is, is really where I think a lot of the opportunities funnel in. And I've seen it recently happen where we have started out with dark accounts. I mean, Kevin was like, hey, here's a massive number of accounts we're not touching. Alex just talked about here are accounts I want our co-sale community to go after. But in listen and consult, there's a couple of signals I want you to pull out of this, and that is the consume signals, right? That means you've talked to the customer, you understand who you're talking to, what the what you maybe you've done, you know, Zoom insights, or you've got some type of other tech target. You've met with the customer, you've listened to some things. Maybe it was your contact where you've listened and understood exactly where they want to go. But the, the main thing with listening and consult is it's qualified. And, and it's very simple. You know, have I, you know, do they have bet? Have I, do they have a budget authority and need and time frame? Do I understand where the deal is? That's the listening and consult stage. It's very easy and it's top funnel. That can be workshops, people attending your workshops, right? As funneling in those, you know, for them to click on your workshop and attend, they're interested. How do you go out and get that and move that forward? The next stage is where I begin to cry. And I cry out of joy because I don't know if there's an Amber Alert going on. But I begin to cry out of joy because being at Microsoft, when I first started, partners were not brought into the fold until the fifth stage. It was like, get the deal done, then engage a partner, then engage. And so what's important about the, the inspiring design is we're saying up front, Microsoft has put a stake in the ground and said, we want to engage partners at the second stage. We think that the opportunity should have partners at the second stage, inspire and design. Well, this is important to the audience out here. You don't have to come to us and be like, hey, the deal's done, or hey, I'm about to sign the papers, and please let me talk to Microsoft. No, you can come and say, hey, I've identified the solution. I'm orchestrating the teams. I like to get with Microsoft, right? 
I like to understand I've captured the customer needs and vice versa. Think about Microsoft when they get the deal to this stage, they're looking for partners, right? That's exciting where you have solution sales specialists or you have AEs that are like, this is in sales cycle two. I need to get a partner. Or I need to start thinking about partners that we want to engage with. Maybe we start putting partners in front of the customer or maybe the customer has their own type of partners they want to use but I need to get somebody assigned to this. Sales stage three, empower and achieve. Now I will tell you, um, being in a partner community, this is where most partners engage, uh, Greg, co-sell. This, this is where most co-sellers engage or ask for Microsoft help. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I definitely think that you put yourself behind the eight ball at this stage. Now you've done listening consult, you've done inspiring design, why are you just now coming to Microsoft at Empower and Achieve? We'll take it, but the reality of it is, is are you building that relationship, right? Are you, you put it in Inspire and Design and you get with the seller, you get the Microsoft seller or vice versa. They got 35 plus more accounts in SMC that, that y'all can go, go after. So I think that's, when you think about Empower and Achieve, great. Yes, there's signals, you know, gaining customer, you know, gaining the proposal to go ahead, creating a proposal. What I love about this is it's engaging legal. So that tells you right then and there that you know either the partner has the right people, it's going to the board, or they dotted their I's and crossed their T's. But when you think about empower and achieve, it is exactly where the deal really gets real. In fact, Microsoft might turn it to commit, right? When you think about that. The fifth stage is realize value. And it is, it is simply that. Right. I think that when you think about we can read this off, I can say coordinate success plan, review, sign off, baseline, update. But you know what realized value is to me if I'm thinking about it from a co-seller standpoint? How do we get here? What's the story we're going to tell? Is there some type of trend that we picked up? You know, if you had realized value and you're about to make this sale with this seller, why aren't you asking for more opportunities like this? Is there an industry? Do you have a solution trend that's picked up? Is there a contact? So at Realized Value, I really want us to start thinking about our win story. How do we tell our velocity story in this MSIM process? Well, you got the deal. It's, it's about to close, but where's the, where's the next one, right? And the fifth stage, manage and optimize. It is exactly what it says. We've sold the deal to the customer. We've worked together as co-sellers. And now we're trying to get into other rooms of the house in that one deal. So again, keeping the connection with the seller from Microsoft or Microsoft keeping the connection with the partner, understanding what rooms of the house that they're in. Can they navigate to another room of the house? Um, do they have a contact? Have they met another power sponsor within the account? Those things are important when you, when you think about it, right? So just those five stages, if you just keep those in mind as a, as a co-seller, will help elevate the language and perk up ears to the sellers. So there are a couple of housekeeping things that I think they're important when you talk about the MCM process, as you begin to have these conversations with sellers, you know, I think about the partner executive summary and I think about the win formula. And I'm going to take you through that. And that was developed at a, at a worldwide level, but I think it's important. So let's talk about the partner executive summary. It used to be the superpower slide. Has it, has any y'all created a superpower slide? Right? I think that what happens to Co-sellers is when they meet a seller or a Microsoft resource, it's just like, I do, ugh. and it's so much. And I think that this, having this slide and taking out the time to put this slide together, and of course, Vince will, will have this in a template form, but having the ability to put this slide together is important because number one, it shows what your company is about. It shows exactly where you're tracking to. A, a Microsoft resource can look at this slide in five minutes and know exactly what the conversation is going to be like, right? And so let's talk about a win formula. You put the slide together, you understand MSIM language. So how do we how do we get this conversation going? And I thought this was important too as an outlier to the MSIM process is how do we take MSIM and build a, a forward-thinking win formula, right? 
How do we align? So number one, we start by, you know, discovering emotion. Some of you are talking about data and AI. Um, I talked to a partner the other day that was talking about um, regulation and, and authorization from chat GPT, uh, migration. How do we think about that from a sales motion? And talking to, that's understanding the trend. That's when you get in that managing, I mean, that realized value if you've won the deal, that you can look back and be able to tell that story and say, man, how do I wash, rinse, and repeat this? And what would be a programmatic way to do that? Work your way back. Figure out what that customer deal size is. If you won one deal and you're talking to them some language and you want to work your way back, let's think about what that customer looks like and who are those resources that are that are most um, that would love to hear that story. And then you think about the conversion rate, the conversion rate, right? Like, what is your win percentage? What do you average? Let's be realistic. You know, when you think about these deals, so let's be realistic about how we're going to build this pipeline. And again, this runs parallel to MSIM because you want to keep that listening consult pipeline going. Right. And then, you know, how many customers right from a lead generation you want to understand, you know, Microsoft has 2X, 3X. I've heard different things, but how much pipeline do you need to hit that win rate percentage? Again, tying it back to that MSM process. So this is what that slide look like, looks like. And when I showed Vince, he was immediately like, wow, I, I really like this slide. Um, can we have the template? But as a partner, I think understanding how to get that top funnel, that's why I started out by saying listen and consult to me was an important sales stage. As you look through the MSM process, you can see how the top funnel you know, starting out with the webinars or email blasts and different things like that. And, and what I love about this is um, I always ask partners, if you, were sir, if you were asked to bring a dish at Thanksgiving dinner, what would it be? This is one solution of one sales motion. This isn't everything that you do. This is, some, this is one sales motion that you would bring to the table if you were asked to cook a dish. Like, this is what you do. This is your bread and butter. This is your differentiator. And how do you run that? I threw this slide in because I think that the most value when you're talking to sellers and you're speaking MSIM, I think the value, you know, a lot of partners get in meetings and they say, well, you know, there's not enough ESIF or I have this problem or this PSAT problem or vice versa. I, those conversations, yes, Microsoft wants to hear, but we're not going to have as many sellers to the street. These conversations, the reason why the MSIM is there is to make them brief, but to make them actionable. And the best thing that you can bring out during your conversations with the sellers is what are the trends? What are the highlights? What are the challenges? What are the ask? And I threw this slide in there just to simplify it. Here are two bullet points that are highlights. Here's some trends that I'm seeing. Hey, I noticed that in healthcare, my solution is peaked up or I'm getting more calls about this solution. Is there a way seller that we're talking about this? Do you have other like for like accounts or are there other people on your team that have like for like accounts? that you can sponsor me on in these conversations. As a leader, if you were sitting in front of an executive, right, from a scale point of view, what kind of highlights are you seeing? What are you seeing from a competitor? You know, are we losing ground? Those types. That's great insight when, you, when you're speaking in some or you're talking about deals or you're talking to different sellers. So with that, we talked about the prescription, right? And I, and I said prescription is, is actionable. Know your, know your differentiation. I think sometimes it's so simple. Think about everybody selling AI. Everybody's got security. Everybody's got everything. But what is your differentiation? What separates you from the other partners? And how do you pull that out in the MSM conversation when you're talking to sellers, right? And the mindset is to fail fast. I think in this process, when you're thinking about getting opportunities at the top funnel and you're thinking about moving things through, you know, velocity sales stage through MSIM, don't be afraid to fail fast. If you don't go into it 100 percent and we don't learn from it, we, it just staggers out. It just becomes, you know, next thing you know, it's three months, six months and we're still there. Let's go in it. Let's build a sales motion. Let's talk MSIM. Let's understand what we want to do and let's. Fail fast if we, but let's take learnings and 
or let's be successful, but let's go at it 100%. I really talk about high impact meetings. And one of the reasons I showed you the partner executive summary was send that ahead of time. I want to reduce meetings from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, right? Think about that. If you are a Microsoft seller and you took eight partner meetings at 30 minutes, you would never be selling, right? And then it becomes, it, sellers begin to get anxiety, right? Oh my gosh, I got five partners who want 45 minutes and I got to turn in this. Let's reduce those meetings to 15 minutes. Let's get high impact meetings. How do we get high impact meetings, right? We know what rooms of the house we're in. We created our partner uh, business summary, our partner uh, executive summary. We know the MSIM process so we can talk to the deals. So 15 minute meetings shouldn't be about, hi, I'm here, I'm located here and I do this and my company has had this many wins and uh, we cook vegetables on the weekend. And, <laughs> you know, it should be, hello, good morning. My name's Elliot Dunlap. I work for ABC Partner. Here's where I sent you our slide ahead of time. I'm pretty sure you took a look at it five minutes before this meeting, <laughs> but you at least know what we do. I want to talk to you about this deal. Put the account name in the subject line. I want to talk to you about this deal. Here's what I've done. It's an MSIM sales stage inspiring design. Here are my actions. Here's my ask. i like to listen to you about what your thoughts are. Can we work on this? Boom, boom, boom. What's the next business actions? Right? When you think about a 15-minute meeting. I want to reduce that. I'm on a crusade to do that. So if y'all start reducing your meetings, email me. Uh, the other thing is solution plus a sales motion equals seller interest. And what I mean by that is sellers are interested in deal philosophy. If you are a partner and you speak the MSIM language and you're able to have an ease of use and you're trustworthy, right? Don't be afraid to say where the deal is in the MSIM language. Don't, don't, don't hype the, the deal up and it's not in the right stage. But if you're trustworthy, that seller will come back to you. Those resources, those Microsoft re resources will pick up. And what will happen is people will begin to hear about you as a partner, right? I love this word strategically tactical. I tell all the partners I manage, let's be strategically tactical. We love the big deals, but tactical keeps the lights on. We forecast every month, right? So being able to understand where your deal is in the MSIM process is important. Right. Being strategic, have some deals that when you talk to the seller or you ask those questions, hey, do you have any other accounts? Here are some strategic deals, but don't forget about the tactical deals or the sales plays that we go about. We spoke about, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about heat mapping, making sure that it's purpose. Um, and one of my leadership styles, I'll throw this in here, is my number one leadership principle is inspect what you expect. Right. So manage don't be afraid to call the seller and say hey we talked a month ago and this deal was in inspire and design i've now moved it to empower and achieve make sure you change that in your msx make sure you change that in your process or i'll change it in my psx right in my partner center so don't be afraid to inspect what you expect and check back in right because that's the way you build trust and you know i, I spoke to i'm a big history Buff and, and Vince and I were talking, and, and I found it very interesting that uh, doing world conflicts, uh, sometimes they call it Jeep bonnet reviews, where things will be going on in the field, and what they would do, some of the generals would just take the plan and lay it on the bonnet, what they call a hood or a bonnet in England, but it's a hood in America, but they would just lay out the plans, and they would start making changes. And I think it's important for us to regroup, rethink, and reassign. Hey, we're going to run some things through the funnels. We're going to talk about MSIM. It's not going to be perfect. Things are going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen. Yes, you might, you know, say the deal was in Inspiring Design, but it was listening. Let's learn from that. But let's think about how do we move this train forward, right? I'll leave you with this quote. Hustle till you no longer have to introduce yourself. I tell all my partners, if you have to walk up and keep introducing yourself to sellers, you want to think to yourself, how do they start walking up to me? Right. How do I speak that language? Because I guarantee you that um, I think there was a seller in here a couple of days ago. I guarantee that if you speak the language of MSIM, what I've just taught you, 
that you're going to get ears perked up. You're going to get more business conversations. If you think about the 15-minute impactful meeting and you prepare right, you will start getting into other accounts. And you won't have to work as hard, and they will know you. So with that, I drop my mic and any questions they answer. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take some questions. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm, I'm, you know, I gotta get you, between you and Kevin Piesker. I don't know if there's uh, more energy in the room. All right, so we have some time for a few questions before we break for lunch. I think we have one right over here. I was trying to beat y'all to, you know, have y'all get the lunch. <laughs> this was great. Thank you so much. I'm a huge believer in consistent sales motions and sales velo- deal velocity. You know, consistency. We've got an organization at uh, our company. I'm with I'm Thad with Calm Vault, who's really focused on SMC. But we haven't gone through the process of really aligning with you guys in terms of your terminology, your pod model, all of that good stuff. What other resources do you have to to take maybe an organization through MSIM training or MSIM development? Yeah. So so Calm Vault, you know, I know your your PDM that you have. There is taxonomy there, and I would just reach out to them and ask them that that same question. But there's resources on the website as well. We have resources about, you know, what SMC is. And I don't know so much as what you heard from Kevin, but we can find that. But I think the MSM process is universal. And if, yeah. if you don't get it from there, then I, I can definitely. And then Elliot's going to be on the podcast right in January. <laughs> so we'll just listen to Ultimate Guide to Partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and we're also, we, at some point, we're going to make all of this amazing, once it's Edited, we'll make some of these amazing sessions available. Yep, That's great question. Yeah. Any other questions? I got over here. Over here, we got some. I got that light up there. It's bright. It's like I'm it is. Yeah, you realize when you're up on. Thanks. Hi, I'm Kim with Delinea. How you doing, Kim? Good, thanks. Um, we are currently transacting and doing everything. And I guess after I heard everything that you said about doing, you know, getting with the field and navigating, Besides organically and just getting to the field sellers, how would you recommend, if we're, we're looking to scale rapidly, how would you recommend best getting to those field sellers? I think, I think you know, this is, this, this is an awesome question because it's, it's a dilemma that a lot of partners are faced with. Being intentional, one of you saw that I'm all about intentional excellence. And I think picking what I've asked is, is that partners, and Amy can contest this because she's one of the partners that manages really... Wow. Well, that wasn't me. <laughs> wow. Is, is, that, is that you pick a lane. Like, is there an industry? Because we can't send out mouths anymore. There's 10,000 SMC customers, right? Yeah. But if you say to yourself, hey, we have a particular solution that's great in education, right? Or it's great in, in you know, healthcare and really a lot of that. And maybe you go through that win formula and say, okay, now there's a thousand healthcare accounts. We're going to use some type of targeted information, Zoom insights or something, and we're going to shrink that to 50 accounts or 100 accounts, whatever it may be. I, I'd probably say keep it at 50 if it's your first time engaging and get really concise on, hey, we're going to have salespeople knock on the door. We're not coming to Microsoft to say, get us in, but we want to co-sell with you, but we've done the investigation, we've done the research, and we want to move forward. I think that's the way to get to it. And sellers you have different, you know, whether you manage or unmanage, there's ways to get in touch with those teams. But get get really boiled down and intentional. I don't know, Vince. No, I think that's, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. We, and I, I'll just add, we are going to continue talking about this subject with co-selling. We have that hour-long workshop, and mm-hmm. you're going to hear some tips and tricks there as well. All right, there's a question back there. Hi, uh, Renu Alwalio, Ashling partner. So a lot of our customers are enterprise customers. We have really trusted relationships with them. Uh, and, you know, when we're doing, we are in the room already done the value proposition and all of that. But then we get to the point of, well, I don't know what you actually own because they're not in IT. They're in the business areas and they don't know where to go to figure out like, well, is this a growth opportunity? Is this a consumption? So how do I guide them in that? Because that seemed to be a scenario more and more that I'm. So you, you're in a room with a customer and you're trying to understand the customer doesn't really know if it's a build or a consumption opportunity. I think, you know, again, this is where I, I think it's valuable that you engage Microsoft early. If you're meeting with the customer, 
there's all different ways to find out. Even if a customer is unmanaged, we got a team that can get you to somebody, a specialist or somebody that you can talk to prior to that. So I would just say, you know, if you got a big meeting with a customer that's coming up, don't be afraid to reach out to Microsoft and prep for that. Hey, I got this meeting. Don't need you right now from the co-sales standpoint. But here's my question. It's with the CFO. We're talking about this. How would you take take this conversation and get some pointers? Okay. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? I feel like this light is out here. I, I hadn't seen a light like that since I got pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, Lindsay with Big Green IT. How are you? How you doing, Lindsay? Good. So at Big Green IT, it's really important for our team to think like the Microsoft sellers. And part of that is understanding how they're compensated, how they're rewarded, and what motivates them. So as you're discussing the MSM cycle, are they rewarded through that entire process? Is there a specific point in which they earn a commission? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So... Every specialist, you know, you got your ATU, your STU, and your CSU as the as the tenants of, of Microsoft's kind of sellers and resources involved. There are certain people that get paid on certain aspects of it and workloads of it. But what's important about the MSIM is, is that every stage is owned by one of those tenants. So it's not really about if they're on the team and they're tied to the account, everybody understands like the AE might be in sales stage you know, inspire and design. The SSP might be in sales stage one to three to AE, two to four, and CSU might be three to five, but they know exactly where each other's handoff is. So it's not necessarily do they get, you know, where they get paid. You can ask the resource, hey, if it's an Azure specialist, they're going to get paid only on the Azure consumption and the Azure selling, right? Versus the AE is going to get paid on everything. But the MSIM process brings it all together so that Everybody knows, I think about Albert and Costello, where they talk about who's on first, who's on second, that thing. Everybody knows exactly who owns what position in that sales cycle. So there's ownership to that. Yeah, awesome. No, you're, you're spot on with that. And again, that's going to be, I'm pl giving a plug for the afternoon sessions because I think some of this will reinforce it. There's somebody over there. Yeah. You asked a good question, like how do you gain trust or how, does, how do they feel comfortable with putting you in front of a customer or... How do you build that confidence? I think that's organic. I think reaching out to the team and understanding, yeah. letting some of the technical people or some of the specialists talk to you, understanding the deals, your win, your win deals that you've had, having those customer wins. I think every partner in here has probably gone through, and, and you and I have talked, have gone through that kind of net new, I'm a new partner. How do I get into the sellers? Yes. You're going you're gonna to want to have a story, and you're going to want to be intentional, and I think that's part of it. Hi. I, I work co-sell for a lot of different co-sellers, we see a lot of deals that expire without a response at all. What's driving that behavior from the sellers? Are they soft rejecting it? And, and why not just reject it? And what yep. should I do in follow-up? You know, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I used to run a lot of the co-sell. So I don't, I think it's, it's, it's both, right? I think sometimes they don't see it. They may not know about it. Maybe there's not a lot of tied description. What I've asked partners to do is when you're putting deals into partner center, or you're wanting to co-sell, put as much description in there as possible. Some partners just don't deal, hey, I'm Exxon, opportunity for $10 million Azure, and they send it through Partner Center. Well, they're probably not going to think that's not real, right? But if you, again, I'm in this rooms of the house. This is the stage that it's in. would like to speak to you. That email is going to go to those sellers. And trust me, you start talking in this MSIM language, I guarantee you're going to get responses. Yeah. Very cool. One more question, question, and then we're going to wrap. I'm Lindsey Petty with Data Analytics Technology Advantage. My question is kind of more about how you kind of scope where you fit. So, for example, today, most of my clients are in the procurement space, but they go across all industries. So it could be you know, Harley-Davidson and industrial, but it could also be Blue Cross Blue Shield and health insurance. So, I mean, in, you, in the Microsoft system, there's really no space for people who just focus on procurement, right? I mean, you'd be looking at industries. or Well, no, work? no. I think... You know, again, when you think about the rooms of the house and you're talking about procurement, right, there are sellers. I don't know if there's a carved out industry, but if it's a customer, it's mapped to Microsoft in some way. But I think when you think about procurement in certain accounts, we're interested in that. The AEs, and because they make the decisions on the purchase orders and how things are going to go out. They also know who are the current partners yeah. 
that they're they're spending money with. So of course, an AE, if you have that type of relationship and saying, hey, I have an opportunity, but at this account, I know this procurement office, an AE would jump all over that. Thank yep. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. So fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Everything that I had hoped for, my friend. So good to Thank have you. you here. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Ultimate Guide to Partnering. Online at ultimateguidetopartnering.com. If you liked this episode, I'd be thrilled if you left us up to a five-star review on either Apple or Spotify. This helps us to continue to feature amazing guests. Also, please check out and subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Ultimate Partner. We'll catch you next time on the Ultimate Guide to Partnering.